He had a fairly clean intro. They're not planning on any changes this time. The car has been good. He's out, Jan. And while he's leaving, we're having this. Oh, there's a big change on the front for Charles oh. Garden. And look out. Huge crash on pit lane. That's Rossi, Kimball, Pastor there. Neves. Right there. And one car was in the air, Somebody. well on top of the other. Alexander Rossi, the Indianapolis 500 champ, had run up front here, had been leading here, a problem. Castro Neves involved, Charlie Kimball involved, and I don't know if Kimball's car is damaged or not. Castro Neves out of his number three. And Kimball, I can see, desperately waving for his crew to come get him. He probably is stalled, but he thinks his car is all right to get restarted. And I can tell you, Townsend, it's still running. That's why he wants to get pushed back, because of the three cars, Kimball's car is still fired up. Where do you see the altitude one of these cars got? Townsend. Oh, I just we saw it in the corner of my eye. There was one literally on top of the other. Caution is out. Take a look. Top of the screen, you see Rossi coming out of his pit stall. He gets oh. together with Kimball. Oh! Oh! What a terrifying moment for Elio Castroneves, the left front wheel, the suspension coming in and, and this, over the cockpit. This is two races in a row. We saw this problem with the lotion and new guard at Mid-Ohio. And it's, uh, you know, your race leader, I've got to know the feeling. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm in Indianapolis again, where you really can't see anything. You rely on your team to give you air traffic control as Kanan negotiates the carnage. Pit lane's so wide, though, here, Robin. It's not like Indianapolis. There's a lot of room. Well, and the other thing is, is in your case, you trust your guy to tell you they're sending you. 